Today is about a very cool animation trick in PowerPoint. Now it's a type of animation where you can also let your audience have full control over when it happens, not just you. So let me explain. You're gonna make things appear by clicking a button. And one use case is for example here, when you wanna present different scenarios. Instead of going through in order, ask your audience what they wanna see first, and then you click to reveal. But this is gonna involve them more in your presentation. You can also use this to add mini quizzes in the middle of your slides. This makes sure that everyone stays involved and it makes your presentation more engaging. And I'm curious if you have a use case for this at work. So please comment below and let me know. Also make sure you're subscribed if you're interested to improve your office skills. Now let me show you how you can set these up. In the first scenario, I wanna be a bit mindful about how I break the news about the budget reporting. And I want my audience to select what they wanna hear first, the good news, bad news, or maybe no news. So I've already prepared the slide with what I wanna say. Now we wanna make it interactive. So if someone selects bad news, we can see this first, and then good news, we see that first. To make this look a bit better, I wanna insert some shapes. So let's go to insert shapes and select this shape right here and then let's just draw it out here okay so that's going to be my good news i'm going to change the fill to a green color okay so i'm just going to hold down control and drag this to create a copy of this and let's do that again and create a third copy of this okay so so far so good let's change this one to an orange and the last one can be a blue Okay, so I wanna see my text that I have. I'm gonna hold down control and select these, right mouse click and send these to the back. Now let's group these objects together. So the no news together with the shape that it's on. So I'm gonna again hold down control, select both and press control G to group these together. You can also right mouse click and go to group and group shapes together. Or you can also do it from the menu under shape format you see group and then group. Okay, so now I have different grouped objects here. So until now, no animation is there, right? So if I go to slide view here, we see everything all at once. The way you can add a trigger to this is to start from the end. So basically what you want to appear, what you want to be animated. Well, I want the answers to be animated here. So I'm gonna start here and add some type of animation to it. So let's go to the animation pane and do something simple, right? It doesn't have to be fancy. We can just make it appear or I like the wipe animation and wipe this from the side. So under effect options, instead of from bottom, I want from left. Now let's copy this animation and apply it to these two. And you can easily do that with animation painter. If you double click on it, we get to copy and paste it more than once, and now I'm just gonna press escape. Okay, so now these have some type of animation, but they have this order. I don't want them to be in order. I want them to be triggered based on this. So I'm just gonna select the first animation and go to the trigger option right here. Check this out, it says on click of, and then I get to decide which object I click on for this to appear. Well, remember, I grouped my object, so it's one of these, but it's very difficult to tell which one is the right one, right? Which one belongs to good news. So it's best to name your objects properly so that you can easily assign them. To do that, we need to bring up the selection pane. Let's go to home. Under the editing options, you're gonna find select here and selection pane. This is gonna show you the list of all the objects that you have on your slide. Now I can see group six is actually this one. So I'm just gonna give it a different name. I'll call it the no box. Then this one is the bad news. Let's call it the bad box. And this one must be the first one. So that's the good box. Okay, so just any name that makes it obvious to you what the object is. I don't really need to name the other ones. So I'm just gonna select my text here, go back to animations, go back to trigger, and now check this out. I see good box, bad box, and no box. So this one needs to be shown when the good box is clicked. 
Now again, for the second one, we're gonna go through the same process on ClickUp. This one is the bad box, and the last one is the no box. Okay, so now check this out. I'm gonna go to presentation mode. Okay, so what do you wanna hear first? Right, let's go with no news. Mm, okay, so now let's go with the good news. We get two additional working days to finalize budget. Yay, what's the bad news? We need to revise all the assumptions and redo the full budget. This way, the audience can decide what they wanna see first. Now let's take a look at our second example. This time, I wanna create a quiz. This way I can check whether my audience and me are all on the same page. So for example, let's say I'm doing an Excel training and then I wanna throw in a quick test. They need to guess the answer to this question. And I'm gonna make my selection based on the most popular answer. Now, if they select something wrong, I wanna get an X here, so a red cross. If they get it right, I wanna get a green check mark. So here first, I can go ahead and insert my shapes or icons. This time, let's go with icons. I look for a cross. Let's take that one. And let's also get the check mark. Let's get this one and insert both on our slide. I'll just make them bigger. Now I'm gonna place this in front of the wrong answers and let's also change the color of this to a red color. I'm gonna hold down control, click on this and drag and place it in front of the other wrong answers. Let's do that again. This one is wrong as well. This is the right answer. Let's change the color of the check mark to a green color. So let's go back to the fill options and go with this green. These look good now. Next step is to animate these. Just pick any type of animation and then we can add a trigger. So I'm gonna go to the animations tab and I'll just go with something simple like appear this time. Let's copy the animation of this and paste it to the other one. So I'm gonna double click on this painter, click here, click here and click here. Okay, so, so far so good. Next step is to add a trigger and base it on the shape here. So when I click this, this is gonna appear. Now I've already gone ahead and grouped my text together with my circles here. And I think I've also named these properly. So let's bring up the selection pane. Another way you can get to it is just click on a shape, go to shape format, and you're gonna see selection pane on the arrange section here. Just click on it and we're gonna get to see all our shapes on our slides. So I did name these A, B, C, and D. Okay, so that part's done. Now we can already go ahead and start with the trigger. So just click on the first object here, go back to animations, go to trigger, on click of A. Next one, trigger, on click of B. And we're gonna continue, on click of C, and last, trigger, on click of D. Okay, so that's it. Everything is done. Let's go ahead and test this. So what does this function return? An error? No. What about C? No. B? That's right. Okay, so that's how easy it is to make your presentations interactive. You can get creative with this and add any type of interactivity that you want. So let's talk about snack options. Which one do you pick? C, you like brownie. Mm, what about B, broccoli, or A, peanuts? I hope you found this PowerPoint trigger trick. It kind of sounds like trick or treat, but trigger trick useful. Don't forget that thumbs up, and I'm gonna see you in the next video.